Hello everyone. We are starting with the fourth chapter of our class 12th accountancy which is retirement or death of a partner under our topic partnership. Okay. So we will be studying about the theory of this chapter, what is the important thing and then we will look at the illustrations and questions as we were doing in the previous chapters. So what is the more, uh, most important thing that we need to remember here? We have learned that in the previous chapter that retirement or death of a partner also leads to reconstitution of a partnership firm. See we understood when, whenever there is a change in profit sharing ratio amongst the existing partner, no one is new, no one new is coming in, no one is going out, but the existing partners decided to okay let's uh, uh, change our terms of partnership. So that's called reconstitution. Whenever a new partner comes in, admission of a partner happens, then it's a reconstitution. In the same way, whenever there is a death or retirement, one partner is like, you know, okay, I don't want to work anymore, tada, bye bye. Now that's retirement, okay, one person dies, then one partner dies, then it's death of a partner. All these leads to reconstitution of a partnership firm. On the retirement or death of a partner, the existing partnership deed comes to an end, the partnership deed comes to an end and in its place a new partnership deed needs to be framed whereby the remaining partners continue to do their business on changed terms and condition. Okay? It's just the end of the partnership agreement, not the end of the partnership firm. Okay? Firm continues, the agreement changes. There is not much difference in the accounting treatment at the time of retirement or or in the event of death. Now what it is, well, let's check. In both the cases, we are required to determine the sum due to the retiring partner in the case of retirement and to the legal representative. So in the case of death, the partner already dies. Okay, Who will you, you give the money, whatever he earned for the, uh, all these years, whom to give all this? to the legal representative, it could be the wife, it could be the son, it could be anyone written in his will, will be the legal representative in the case of deceased partner. After making necessary adjustment in the respect, in respect of, so do remember in partnership, okay, what all adjustments are required in the case of retirement or death, uh, one adjustment is uh, in the case of goodwill. Second one will be revaluation of assets. See, you might be able to recall it that we used to do the same thing in our admission. Yes, it's just this chapter is just the reverse of admission. Admission a partner comes in, retirement a partner goes out. Okay, so the entries will be mostly reversed, the concept is reversed. So, yes, we will be doing goodwill, we will be doing revaluation of assets and liabilities in the same way. Transfer of accumulated profits and losses. So the previous balance of P&L general reserve we used to give. This time also we will give. And in addition, we may also have to compute the new profit sharing ratio among the remaining partners. And so their gaining ratio. Do remember in our admission, we used to find the sacrificing ratio. Okay, one person is coming in. How much others are sacrificing? Here, one person is going out because a person is going out now, his share will be distributed amongst the existing, the new partners, okay, the remaining partners. So, these remaining partners will gain. Obviously, the uh, people who are gaining will have to compensate to the person who is leaving, who is sacrificing. So, that we need to find out. Next is ascertaining the amount due to the retiring or deceased partner. Okay, now let's see the sum due to the retiring partner in the case of retirement and in the to the legal representative in the case of uh, or executors in the case of death includes now see first is credit balance. So what all things that the retiring pa the partner who is going out he will get or if the person died okay who will get his legal representative or executors will get. So what amount, what all things they will get? First thing that they will get is credit balance of his capital account. Whatever capital is uh, that belongs to the deceased or the retired partner, he or she will get that. Then the credit balance of his cre uh, current account, if any, because it is not necessary that current uh, account balance will have credit balance. Next is his share of goodwill, his share of accumulated profits also, his share 
in uh, the gain of revaluation of assets and liabilities because he was the old partner earlier. All the assets and liabilities, whatever profit that has happened on that, his share also needs to be given in that. Next is his share of profits up to the date of retirement or death. Okay. Generally, what happens? Generally, the rate, uh, date of de retirement is the last date of the balance sheet. Okay. But in case of death, we cannot just find out, right? A person can die anytime. It's not the okay. I'll die on the 31st March only. This cannot happen. So, if he uh, died on, let's say, 1st of uh, July, okay, he worked in this accounting for April, May, June, three months completely he worked. So, he should get three months profit, but that will happen in death case only. Uh, we generally don't get a question where a partner retires in the middle of the year or on a specific date like that. Generally, they retire on the last day, okay. Then, his interest on capital is involved up to the date of retirement on death his salary, commission, any due, any amount due to him up to the date of retirement, he should get all this, okay, he or she should get all this, okay. Let's see, do we have to take anything from him also when he's going out or when he's dying, okay. So, uh, ascertaining the amount uh, due from retiring or deceased partner, so the following deductions, if any, may have to be made from his share okay what all things we need we need to debit balance of his current account see i told you there can be a situation where uh, his current account is written on the asset side that means a debit balance that means that will be taken from him okay or from his capital it will be reduced his share of goodwill to be written off if necessary his share of accumulated losses his share of loss on revaluation of assets or liabilities uh, his share of loss up to the date of retirement or death, his drawings up to the date of retirement or death, or interest on drawings if involved up to the date of retirement or death. So all these things will be taken. So if a person dies, who will give? See, generally what happens, uh, there's always enough balance in the capital account that all these things will be adjusted and the reduced capital will be given, okay? Generally this happens. Thus. Similar to admission, the various accounting aspects involved on retirement or death of a partner are as follows. First of all, what we need, we need to ascertain the new PSR and the gaining ratio. Earlier we used to find out the sacrificing ratio. Now what we need, we need to do the gaining ratio. Then treatment of goodwill, then revaluation of assets and liabilities, then adjustments in respect of uh, unrecorded assets and liabilities, distribution of accumulated profits and losses, ascertaining the uh, ascertainment of share of profits and losses up to the date of retirement or death, or adjustment of capital if required that we used to do in the last questions of admission. And the last thing is settlement of the amounts due to retired or deceased partner, okay, the person who is going out. Now, there cannot be a two balance carried down. How can a balance can be carried down when the person is going? So, it should be two bank or if the firm does not have money to give, it can be treated as a loan, okay, Ki we will give you later on, we will give you interest, okay, right now we can give you only this much, okay, like this. So, new profit sharing ratio, let's see. New profit sharing ratio is the ratio in which the remaining partners will share future profits after the retirement of any uh, partner, retirement or death of any partner. The new profit, uh, new share of each of the remaining partner will consist of his own share that was he was having earlier plus the share acquired from the retiring or the deceased partners, the person who is going. Okay, he'll give, okay, my 50% share you will get, 20% you will get, 30% you will get, okay. Like this he could say or he could just say, I don't care, I am going, rest you decide, okay. This can also happen. So normally, the continuing partners acquire the share of retiring or the deceased partner in the old ratio, okay. So if a person just die, okay, his share will be divided amongst the same ratio which the remaining partner were having earlier. We'll be solving this and then you'll understand it better. And there is no need to compute the new profit sharing ratio. Okay, what we'll do, let's say the uh, ratio was earlier was the ratio A is to B is to C. Okay, C died. So earlier the ratio was 4 is to 3 is to 2. Okay, and who died? C died. So what we generally do uh, in this case, uh, we just delete C. 
we just delete C, okay? And the remaining partners will share in this ratio, okay? This happens, we just delete whosoever is gone, okay? And the, this is the new profit sharing ratio. So, in the absence of any information, it is assumed that they will acquire it in the old profit sharing ratio and so share the future profits in their old ratio. Next is, the continuing partners may acquire the share uh, in the profits of, of the retiring or deceased partner in a proportion other than their, their old ratio. In that case, the new, uh, there is the need to compute the new profit sharing ratio among then, so let's say, ki, okay, 4 is to 3 is to 2 was the thing. They are saying, ki, okay, now his share, let's take equally. Now, if they're getting equally, then obviously there will be a difference, okay? What will be the difference? Let's say A's old share was 4 upon 4 plus 3, 7 plus 2, 9. And he is getting what? Uh, 2 upon 9, half of 2 upon 9. He is getting half of 2 upon 9, okay? So his share becomes 4 upon 9 plus uh, 2 upon 18 plus 2 upon 18. Let's make this also 2, 2. So 8 plus 10 upon 18 is the new share. Obviously, if he is 10 upon 18, the uh, B1 will be 8 upon 18. Okay, so now 10 is to 8, okay, the ratio is what, 5 is to 4, earlier it was 4 is to 3, now the ratio becomes 5 is to 4, okay, understood, if there is a specific percentage, how his share will be divided. Next, yeah, now gaining ratio, okay. What is gaining ratio? I told you already know what is sacrificing ratio. So let's see what is gaining. The partner is going, so others who are remaining are gaining. So the ratio in which the continuing partners have acquired the share from the retiring or deceased partner is called the gaining ratio. Now, the new ratio of each of the remaining partner will consist of his own share in the firm plus the share acquired from the retiring or deceased partner. In that case, the gaining ratio of the remaining partners will be the same as their old profit sharing ratio. If he's just going, ki, okay, I don't care, you divide however you want to divide, then it will divide in the old ratio. So, like we used to do, old ratio becomes a sacrificing ratio. In this case also, old ratio will become the gaining ratio. Alternatively, what is the second thing? Proportion in which they acquire the share of the retiring or deceased partner may be duly specified like uh, we did, the half-half they were doing, okay? So in that case, uh, again, there is no need to calculate gaining ratio as it will be ratio in which they have acquired the share of profit from the retiring or deceased partner, like see, half-half, so it's one is to one, gaining ratio is what? One is to one. The problem of calculating gaining ratio arises primarily when the new profit sharing ratio of the continuing partner is specified. In such case, a situation, uh, in such a situation, the gaining ratio should be calculated by deducting the old ratio uh, of each continuing partner from his new share. So sacrificing ratio is what? Sacrificing ratio we know. Uh, sacrificing ratio used to be old ratio minus new ratio. Gaining ratio is opposite. So gaining ratio, oh, what a G. Gaining ratio equals to what? Gaining ratio equals to new ratio minus old ratio. Okay? Do remember sacrificing is what? Old ratio minus new ratio. Gaining is what? New ratio minus old ratio. Okay? Done? Now, in our next video, what we'll be doing, we'll be doing illustration number 1 to 5, which are given uh, from your page number 170 in the NCRT. I'll see you in the next video, and we'll be discussing all these five illustrations. Thank you.